this uh, wonderful uh, morning. Um, Can I just sit here? I'm supposed to uh, give closing remarks, which is always tough because expectations to bring it all together are so high. So that's why I've asked to actually uh, Ruth Levine to share this load with me. Uh, Ruth is one of the most uh, thoughtful people that, that I know. Uh, but also she has a wonderful perspective on uh, having uh, been uh, at the birth of Free IE and at least partly caused it probably. Uh, and uh, from, uh, fr from that point of view, uh, you know, she, she could have a variety of reactions to what we are today from, that's exactly what I expected you guys to be to, oh my god, what have I done? Uh, but uh, I do want, I think, uh, uh, to hear uh, from you, Ruth, on just what you've taken away from um, uh, the past d day and a half, and anything else you might want to say, and then uh, I'll, I'll chime in afterwards. So uh, thank you, Ruth, for agreeing to do this. You know, I really want to thank everybody who has been here for uh, a day and a half for this immersive experience that sort of befits the 10th anniversary of celebration for the International Initiative for Impact Evaluation. I think it's been a really rich set of discussions. And one thread that I've seen throughout is around the question of trust and the importance of trust in the methods and trust between people who are producing and using the findings from impact evaluations. Um, and that, that is, you know, really uh, largely not a technical issue, but one about how people relate to each other. Are we on the same team or are we on different and maybe even opposing teams? And um, I also observe that there are a lot of young people who have been here for the, the past day and a half, and you may be kind of thinking about what habits you want to cultivate to have the richest and, and highest impact career. And so I'm going to take maybe five minutes or so to uh, provide an intervention that I hope will have an impact on your, on your futures. And for this, I'm going to draw on um, a very simple and useful framework that the American sociologist Robert Putnam uses to talk about social cohesion. And that, that is what makes people trust each other, really. And he talks about uh, two things. He talks about bonding in social capital and bridging in social capital. And I think that has a lot to offer us as professionals. So when we think about bonding, that means um, creating a shared vocabulary, establishing a shared framework that we all understand, um, spending a lot of time with each other, reinforcing the same set of ideas, um, articulating the ways in which our work is different than other people's work and maybe even superior to other people's work just once in a while. And that phenomenon of bonding, which, which actually we've been doing quite a bit of in this session and often do in conferences that have the word impact evaluation in their titles, that phenomenon is very, very important. Um, and it is also very much reinforced by the nature of academic disciplines and incentives in academic institutions, whether you're studying or you're uh, on the faculty. And they're certainly reinforced by the, the culture of, of uh, peer-reviewed journals. Now, so that's bonding. I think we all sort of maybe have some intuition about what that feels like. And then there's bridging. So bridging in social capital is when you're extending yourself to others. Um, you're looking for points of connection around a shared goal and that's a shared goal, but not necessarily shared language, shared framework, shared perspective, but a shared goal. Um, and in the pursuit of those, that goal, you are willing to kind of go the extra mile to speak in language that other people might be able to better understand. And uh, you're uh, willing to listen to other points of view. So that's, uh, that's bridging. And so I think in the impact evaluation community, we might identify a goal that we share with many, many others. 
as, um, as a shared ambition of using reason and theory and data and empirical analysis to better understand and solve big, big social and economic and environmental problems in the world. And there is no shortage of those problems. So we share that goal uh, with many, many other communities. And I think probably could do more to bridge with those other communities. And Beryl brought that out right at the end of her, her panel. Um, so I think that as you're thinking about how to spend your time and your intellectual creativity and effort, how to spend your social capital, um, there's a lot to be gained from reaching out to others beyond the impact uh, community, imp impact evaluation community. What does that mean? Well, it certainly means the larger evaluation profession. Uh, it means data scientists who are um, just doing quite remarkable things with, often with uh, forms of data that we don't necessarily uh, ourselves feel comfortable with, whether that's cell tell or social media feeds, remote sensing. There's certainly some bridging that's been going on, but a lot more potential. It also means uh, working closely and trying to understand what can be gained from working with people who are specialists in monitoring and using administrative data. It means working with policy researchers who use a whole range of different um, theories and uh, data to answer uh, large questions. And it means working with uh, the media, working with advocates who are often as it was raised in the last panel, much better than we are in translating key findings to uh, those who uh, influence poli uh, political uh, decision making. So the shorthand for all those communities and ourselves is people who work on evidence-informed policy making. It is a large field that often is characterized or is characterized by a lot of individual groups, the impact evaluation group being one of the most uh, bonded together. And I really think that there's a large agenda of, of work to connect all of those who are working on this shared goal of evidence-informed policy making. You know, when you're faced with a gap, there are kind of two approaches to deal with it. So 10 years ago, we talked about the evaluation gap. And the way we've been trying to deal with it is by filling the gap, doing lots more and better evaluations. And a tremendous amount of, pro of progress has been made to fill that gap. And now we're talking about a wholly different kind of gap, the gap between the generation and the use of evidence, broadly defined in a systematic way. That is a much larger gap. It is maybe best characterized as a chasm. It is not going to be filled by sort of filling it. It is not going to be um, dealt with by filling it. There is only one way to deal with that gap, and that is by building bridges. So I strongly recommend to all of you who are thinking about how to spend your time and your effort that you spend at least as much time building bridges with people who use other methods, who have different perspectives, as you do bonding with those in the impact evaluation community. So with that uh, and with the, the expectation that 3IE in its next 10 years will be part of those, that bridge building exercise. I'm going to turn it over to Manny. Oh, thanks so much. I mean, what did I tell you, right? <laughs> really, th really thoughtful and thought provoking. And, uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, very good advice for not just 3IE, but for the whole uh, development community. Um, there are just two things, other things that I, I, I want to do before I, I, I let you go. The first one um, is uh, give you sort of my own takeaway and uh, what it means for, for 
us, you know, what we've gained uh, from the past day and a half and, and the rich discussion, well, what, what I've gained. Now, I'm not going to uh, uh, impose that on anyone else. And, and then uh, some, some thank yous. Um, so um, I, I, I'm not going to summarize uh, the past day and a half. I couldn't even if I, uh, I wanted to. But to me, um, there were, uh, there's a lot of learning for me. And uh, there were sort of four takeaways that I see that uh, we just need to keep in mind that resonated time and again, I think, in, in the past uh, day and a half. Um, so I'm an economist by training. And I was really interested to see that um, this issue of trade-offs came up several times in, in, in the past day and a half. And, and there were two aspects that uh, to me uh, uh, resonated. One is, and Adeline mentioned this just now, uh, is this uh, uh, thre possible trade-off uh, between accountability and, and learning. And, and, uh, and um, I don't know if it's a, a chasm, but uh, there were uh, several times in which uh, this came up. And that's something that we can do uh, to resolve necessarily, but it's something we just have to keep in mind as, as we go forward. Uh, for example, yesterday, uh, Anshu, you talked about, uh, you know, uh, what work was, you, ha you, you couldn't have an arm's length relationship and really have an impact, and yet some of our policymakers were saying, we really want to hold people accountable and we need independent uh, advice on whether or not things work. And, and that's just something we have to live with. Uh, a lot of the... Uh, funds or impetus for evaluation may actually be because of the accountability side. People want to know what they're getting out of their money, value for money uh, kind of thing. Uh, what was uh, uh, the best possible effects that my money could possibly have? I think that came up in your session, Ruth. And then, like today, it was like, gee, we need to learn. And to do that, we have to be open and, 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 and inclusive. Uh, the other trade-off is the trade-off uh, that I heard about outcomes. That uh, especially if you have an accountability agenda, you want to have an objectives-based evaluation in which, uh, but we heard a lot about uh, outcomes that were unintended, that were uh, long-term, social versus economic, and that kind. Of. So there were just two things. So, so that the first thing I want to say is that uh, what I'm taking away is that this, th these trade-offs are things that we have to keep in mind as, as we go forward. Um, the, the second thing is that uh, I think Howard set us off on, on, on knowledge brokering uh, and as, as a possibly new role for the, the development community. I think that's, that, that's a real issue. I don't think we resolve it, who's going to do that. I think there's an agreement uh, on, uh, on that it should be done. What is 3IE's role? What, 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 what is others' role? But I think this issue that it goes beyond synthesis and the need uh, not just to make um, data available and digestible, but the need to make it appetizing <laughs> is uh, really going to be an issue for uh, for all of us. And today we heard a lot about data sharing, uh, but it's that appetizing bit that uh, we perhaps, as technical people, uh, tend not to 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 to, to work with. And, and the third thing, and this is something that, that and the last thing uh, that Ruth brought up, is uh, we're all mostly, I think, if not all, here in this room. Um, we're born into the technical side of things. We are nerds, but whether we like it or not. And, and Ruth was, uh, I think, very right to remind us. A and I, I actually thought that uh, powerfully, uh, Gonzalo uh, brought this out, that we really need to talk, think about beyond, beyond techniques. Uh, Gonzalo, uh, in his inimitable way, talked about uh, storytelling uh, in, in, in a very graphic and engaging way. Uh, I think, uh, Ruth, you talked about the bridge building and bonding. And what I take away from this is, and the fact that you have all stuck with us here for a day and a half, uh, I'm uh, very humbled and gratified that 3IE has a convening authority that enables us to do this. 
and that's some, really something that uh, we'll we'll take moving forward. Okay, so we'll take into account these possible trade-offs and and how to address them. I think we need to work more on the role for knowledge brokering and 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 really making uh, sure that the information that we have uh, goes beyond accessibility. And finally, that uh, we can't just stick our heads in the technical uh, hole, but really to go beyond that. So that's the first bit that I wanted to say. Uh, the second and, and, and last bit is to uh, thank people. Uh, we don't have time for this, but, <laughs> uh, uh, but many people have worked very hard to bring us all, bring us all here, but the, f the first uh, big thank you, of course, is to our supporters, uh, um, the Gates Foundation, the Hewlett Foundation, and, and UK DFID in particular, uh, which is why we chose actually to move our board meeting to be here in London uh, this time around because we wanted to uh, celebrate that, that long uh, and uh, fruitful partnership uh, with us. I want to thank all of you. Uh, it's always great, actually, to address uh, those who are staying to the last session uh, because uh, uh, you're self-selected. Uh, but really, thank you for, for staying with us for, for the past day and a half. I want to thank our board members and speakers who have traveled from far away. As I mentioned, uh, we like to have these evidence weeks uh, at the time of our board meeting because, as, as you've all seen, um, some of our best resource people are our board commissioners. Uh, and uh, to bring them on board, and they uh, uh, actually uh, entice others to come ha has been wonderful. But I do want to thank our, our own team and who have worked uh, really hard. Uh, my SMT colleagues, especially, you've seen them uh, do the polling. Uh, uh, Marie and, and Beryl have worked really hard to lead us uh, on the uh, agenda. Uh, and uh, really uh, are putting together uh, some great and diverse panels on, 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 on topics. Uh, there, there are two people whom they've relied on a lot on um, making sure that, you know, remember in Star Trek, uh, the Captain Kirk would say, make it so to somebody. And, and the two people that they, that, that they relied to make it so uh, were uh, Bharat and Amir. Are, are they here by any chance? Okay, <laughs> Bharat the back there. Okay. Uh, they, they weren't alone. Uh, and uh, from our uh, New Delhi office, let me just mention the names. Uh, uh, people have been working tirelessly on, on the agenda, logistics. You've seen them working on videos, uh, doing everything from uh, 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 publications to uh, our social media. Let me just mention them. Uh, Didi, Pradeep, Tanvi, Diksha, Kanaka, Ziba, and, Say uh, and Sayak, and also our travel team in Delhi, Mitlesh and Rahul, for getting many of us here. So, a round of applause for all of them. Uh, la last by but not least, it's our London office, uh, who uh, we've already mentioned, uh, Ami, of course, but I do want to thank Richard, Juliet, Hannah, Amarin, and Raj. So thank you. So um, this is not the end. Uh, it's only uh, a beginning. It's the end of our first 10 years. We're looking forward to at least the, uh, uh, the, the next 10. And we invite you to keep engaged with us in this great journey. Thank you. Thank you.